Hi, welcome to the channel to Rational. I'm Pranay Sharma and in this video we are going to talk about the arithmetics we use in R programming and the objects we use to store the values in R programming. This is part of a series where we are learning the basics of R programming using R Studio. You can check out the previous video where we installed R Studio as well as R programming and talked about the layout of R Studio. Now, without any delay, let's get started. In the previous video, I talked about the comments as well as the importance of it. We start a comment using hash. Anything written in one single line after this hash will be treated as comments. That means our programming will not treat that as any codes. So any additional information or any labeling I have to do, I will do it using hash. So here I'll say arithmetics on R. So the basic arithmetics that we need to do are very simple. That means if you want to add two values, let's say I have two plus five, I will get a seven. I press control enter whenever I have to run the code and the code will run down here. You can see two plus five is seven. I can subtract, I'll say 54 minus 27, control enter and I get answer as 27. Multiplication, like if I say four into 23, I get 92. I can do division. You have 23 divided by 5. I have 4.6. You can use all of these on non-integer values as well. Negative, positive does not really matter. You can do your normal arithmetics on all type of numbers. You can write a big equation. Let's say 3 minus and then in bracket, I have 23 plus 5 divided by 2 into 2, something like this. So it will be using the board mass rule. That means it will first solve anything inside a bracket. So this is what it will solve first. And among that also solve the division first, then the multiplication, then the addition and subtraction accordingly. Press control enter, I get minus 48 here. And we can talk about power. For power, you have two options. You can use something like 8 raised to 3. This hat, this hat symbol is above your 6. So you will press shift and 6. Press control enter, I get 512. Or you can put double asterisk mark. So 8 asterisk asterisk. 3 will also give me the same. So both of these we can use for power. For square root, you can obviously use the power. You can say 8 raised to 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 and I have 2.82 or I can use sqrt this is a function for square root so square root 8 and i get the same answer here for other roots you should use this raised to 1 by 3 raised to 1 by 4 we don't have special functions for them now there is a function called modulus modulus just gives me the remainder of any division so this gives me remainder any division and it would be something like if, if I say 25 percentage percentage 3 so here I will get a remainder of 1 because 24 is divisible by 3 and I will be left with a single remainder that was single value as a remainder that would be 1 similarly if you want the integer part we will call it as integer division this will give you integer part of any division like in this case 25 percentage 
and division and then percentage this is the symbol for it and 3 I get 8 because 24 divided by 3 will give me 8 and 1 was the remainder so this will be called as integer division now let's talk about objects objects are nothing but values or letters in which you can store numerical values you can also store non-numerical values we call non-numerical values as strings or factors so I can say a is equal to 5 and if I press control enter here it says a equal to 5 and you will see on top here in the global environment you have a as 5 so you can use any letters and combination of letters and numbers to write the name for an object to store the values you can use arrows as well you can say b less than dash this becomes an arrow that means I am storing the value in b 4 and you can see b 4 I can use the arrow on the other direction also I can say 6 arrow c control enter and you can see c is 6 so many times in many books you might see these arrows used but I always use equal to because it is very straightforward and we don't have to worry about where the direction of this arrow is. Now if I want to change the value of c I can again rewrite it I can say c is equals to 9 and the value has been changed here. If I want to remove an object we have a function called remove our programming especially R studio what it does is as soon as I open the bracket it closes another bracket so I don't have to worry about closing the brackets after I'm done writing them so let's say remove C control enter and you can see now from the global env environment C is removed you can use objects to store string as well let's say I am writing name is equals to and I want to write name as Pranay Sharma. So I will be using the inverted commas or the double inverted commas whenever I am using strings. So either inverted commas or double inverted commas. You can see as soon as I open them, I also have a closed one. So the R Studio will close the inverted commas for me so that I don't have to worry about it. But always look for whether the brackets has been closed whether the inverted commas has been closed or not and I'll press control enter now here you can see name Pranay Sharma now if I want to call any of these objects I can do it very simply I can say name and press control enter and you'll see here it has called this value Pranay Sharma it's giving me a warning warning does not matter much it's fine here now the other way I can do the same thing is using print print is a function we use whenever we want our programming to show us what the value is so print name so you can see here I have this print Pranay Sharma and now I am not getting any warning so print is a better function to use whenever we are trying to call a single value especially if it is in the string form like here now let's say the name has been stored here I don't know what that actual value is or let's say the name keeps on changing in my programming but I want to print that my name is whatever the name is written here so what I can do is I can use print and another function called paste now the paste function will be used to paste two strings together we can use a string and we can use a number as well so whenever a value has been stored here let's say a is 5 if I want that to be written in one single sentence that the value of a is whatever the value is here so I will use the function paste so the first thing is I am writing my name is and I want this name that has been stored here to be shown after this so I'll come out of these inverted commas give a comma and then write name so what it will do is it will paste these two strings 
together and then print it. I'll press control enter and you can see my name is Pranesh Sharma. Similarly, if I want to print a number with a string that I'm writing, so same thing, print paste, then I'll say the value of a is and then comma a. If I press control enter, you can see here now the string says the value of a is 5. It took the value of a here that is 5. I can do one thing, I can change this value if I say value of a is 14 and I press control enter. Now you can see the value of a has become 14 and I run this again. Now you can see the value of a is 14. So this print paste is very much useful whenever we are declaring something after we are done with our statistics. You can do all of these basic arithmetics on the objects as well. Of course the object should be numerical in nature that means I can do it on a b but I cannot do it on name. So I can say a plus b I have 18. I can say a divided by b I have 3.5. I can store whatever I am doing I can say c is equals to a minus b and I am not getting an answer because it has stored the value in C. I can check the answer here 10 or I can call it and say C, C is 10. So this is how you can use objects to store the values numerical as well as non-numerical values. There are some restrictions while writing the name of an object. I cannot use space in between names. So if I say name 2 is equals to Let's say Abhay Jain. If I press control enter, it will give me an error, unexpected numerical constant in name 2 because I cannot have a space in between the name of my object. I can put an underscore, that would be fine. Control enter and now you can see name underscore 2 is Abhay Jain. I cannot start the name of an object with a number if I say 2a it says unexpected symbol anyways if I say 2a is equals to 12 it will again say unexpected symbol in 2a I cannot start the name of an object with a number it should always start with a letter and smaller case and upper case will be different so a is equals to 12 you can see here a has been changed to 12 and capital a is equals to 14 will be treated as two different objects similarly name is going to be different from this small name okay so if i run this it will give me an error object name not found because this name does not exist. The name that I have written here has small n whereas here I have called a capital N. So these two are completely different objects. So lowercase and uppercase are completely different when you are writing anything in R programming. That's it for this video. In the next one we are going to learn vectors. I'll see you in the next one.